Squad back with another reaction. I seen your face. You know what I'm saying? I'm reckless. And I'm Chris. We got the war in Jacksonville update. You know what I'm saying? Uh, definitely ready to check this out because we've been trying to, you know what I'm saying, follow up a lot of these rappers, especially in Jacksonville. So it's definitely dope. You feel me to check this out? Make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe button. Let's get in the video. The war in Jacksonville went viral last year after rival rappers Young and Ace and Fulio took shots at each other's dead homies on Who I Smoke and the When I See You remix. But a lot has gone down behind the scenes since the beef first popped off. Here's what's been going on. Allegedly, one of Ace's deadliest shooters is a rapper named K-So. He's currently facing two first degree murder charges and is a huge part of why the beef went viral in the first place. K-So took the beef to the next level when he allegedly murdered Fulio's 16 year old little brother Bibby. In February 2019, Bibby was sitting outside his apartment with a friend when a gunman walked up and started letting off shots. Bibby and his homie split up and ran off, but the shooter chased him down and lit him up. Having your little brother die is tragic enough, but K-So and Ace ain't stopped there. Ace made Bibby and the whole beef famous when he dropped Who I Smoke. He dissed Bibby and other dead KTA members, then K-So dissed back on the track K-So. K-So was already a suspect because of how much he dissed Bibby in music and on social media. But before the cops had enough evidence to arrest him, K-So allegedly caught another body with some help from his own dad. Back in 2018, K-So's brother Boss Goon was released from prison after serving seven years on a burglary charge. According to people close to him, he was trying to turn his life around and make a career in music instead of the streets. But tragedy struck just when he was getting started. On January 16, 2019, Boss Goon performed at a club in Jacksonville. His dad and a bunch of other relatives came through to support him, and after the show, they all loaded up in the same car. But before they could get out, someone drove by and started letting off shots. Damn. Everyone in the car got hit, and Boss Goon was tragically killed. After he died, a KTA affiliate named Lil Buck dropped a diss track aimed at Boss Goon. This made K-So think Buck was involved in the murder, so he crashed out and allegedly killed him in broad daylight. Then what Damn. happened next was like something straight out of a movie. K-So and two other dudes allegedly ran up on Buck and shot him outside of a mall. Then, while one of them was still standing over his body, the cops rolled in and chased after him. K-So and the others took off, but then they crashed their car in a residential neighborhood. K-So ran off in one direction, while the other two broke into a random house and took a woman hostage. They stole some of her husband's clothes, then made a call to have someone come pick him up. K-So managed to get away, but his homies was later identified by the woman they held hostage. Their names is Dominique Barner and Leroy Whitaker, and the woman was able to point one of them out in the lineup after she recognized his tattoos. Barner getting arrested was the worst case possible for K-So. Barner told a police informant that K-So was a shooter, then doubled down when they questioned him about it. Moral of the story to this whole shit. You niggas be doing shit with all y'all buddies. That's my nigga, that's my nigga. We, we this, we that. Niggas is gonna go. And they is gonna tell. So you better know. I keep I I, I can't stress this shit enough. Niggas, y'all say these y'all niggas and this and that. Y'all gonna do the bad shit. I'm not I'm not telling y'all gonna do no bad shit. Stay positive, you know what I'm saying? Be respectful. <clears throat> All that shit, y'all already know you feel me. Y'all positive about. But nigga, when you go do some nigga, y'all call everybody y'all nigga, bro. Everybody y'all nigga. And niggas, I'm telling y'all, they gonna tell on you. They don't wanna sit in there. Especially if they fir they first offense, second if they don't want to sit in there. Who want to sit in jail? A lot of you niggas do. I'm about to say a lot. I think y'all do. <laughs> but but shit. Barna told a police that? informant that Queso was a shooter, <clears throat> then doubled down when they questioned him about it. He also snitched on Queso's dad for picking him up from the house he broke into after the shooting. Queso and his brother Abdul Robinson Jr. was both indicted for second degree murder, but in 2022 the charges was upgraded to first degree. Queso's time Damn. behind bars ain't been easy. In December 2021, he posted a video on Instagram that shows prison guards allegedly body slamming him onto the ground. He captioned the post with, Modern slavery. Even though my innocence is being proven, I'm still being targeted and abused every day while I'm in here. These officers still have not been suspended or no consequences. I'm fighting for my life mentally and physically. No matter what they do to me, they can't keep an innocent man down. Hashtag free me. To top it all off, K-So got hit with another murder charge while he was in jail for allegedly killing Bibby back in 2019. After his charges was upgraded to first degree murder, Bibby's mother told News for Jax, it was a relief because I was terrified the entire time. It's a relief because now I've got my faith in the court system. k 
Queso's legal team Damn. tried to get his $4 million bond reduced after the charges was upgraded. But then the judge decided that he can't be bonded out at all. It's unclear why the charges was bumped up, but the prosecution obviously thinks they got a strong case if they willing to go to trial over it. It's harder to convict on a first degree murder charge, so they might have some solid evidence that the public don't know about. The trial date ain't been set yet, but Bibby's mom is ready for it all to end. She told News for Jax, I just can't wait until this trial is over with so we can finally start to heal because none of us have healed yet. None of us mm. have begun to heal yet. Queso's facing life in prison if he's convicted, but he ain't the only Jacksonville rapper with an open case right now. In April 2022, his biggest op, Fulio, got hit with a felony charge for fleeing from the police. On April Damn. 5th, 2022, the police tried to pull Fulio over for his illegally tinted windows. But instead of stopping right there, Fulio drove another three blocks while he and two other dudes in the car allegedly rummaged around as if they were attempting to conceal and or retrieve illegal items. When he finally stopped, he told the cops there was two guns in the car, but the cops only found one. Right now, Fulio's on house arrest till his next court date, but he been in the headlines like crazy for the past few months. The war in Jacksonville really popped off when the diss tracks Who I Smoke and When I See You Remix both went viral. And back in October, Fulio doubled down on the disrespect with the track List of Dead Ops, where he went after every single one of his dead enemies. Yeah, List of Dead Ops is one of the most disrespectful tracks ever. There ain't no yeah, hook, oh just one long verse where Fulio goes in on 30 of his dead ops, including Young and Ace's brother and his two friends who was murdered right next to him. One month after he dropped the track, someone pulled up to the studio Fulio was at and tried to kill him, but he got away with nothing but a graze. The latest charge don't seem too serious, but two of Fulio's homies just found out that they gonna be spending the next seven years in prison. YNR Mookie and YNR Slugger T, aka the Murder Twins, was both convicted of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Everyone knows about Fulio's beef with Ace, but rumors say the war between ATK and KTA really started at a party when Young and Ace allegedly shot at Mookie. Mookie and Slugger T both got arrested during an investigation called Operation Wrap Up. The Jacksonville Damn. Sheriff's Office went after alleged gang members who's using music videos and social media to promote violence, and now the Murder Twins are both gonna be off the streets for a minute. YNR took a major hit when Mookie and Slugger got locked up, and to make matters worse, Mookie's own homie, Spot Em Got Em, was accused of snitching on him. Young and Ace's brother, ATKY, Spot Em Got Em snitching like that? Damn. Got locked up, and to make matters worse, Mookie's own homie, Spot Em Got Em, was accused of snitching on him. Young and Ace's brother, ATKYBZ, leaked paperwork that allegedly proves Spot Em Got Em worked with the cops. But Mookie Aww. later said it was all cap. Rumors about snitching can get you killed, but that's not the only problem Spot Em is going through. Back in July 2021, he allegedly pointed a gun at a parking attendant in Miami and threatened him. Then, when the police showed up at his hotel room to arrest him, they found him lying in bed with an AK-47. Spot him got him was hit with charges for aggravated assault with a firearm and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, but the judge let him off easy with an $18,000 bond. His charges is pretty serious, but it's nothing compared to what happened next. Two months after his arrest, Spot him got him was driving down I-95 in Miami when another car pulled up next to him and started dumping shots. When it was over, the driver's side was left with 22 bullet holes, but luckily, Spot him got him was only hitting the hip. A dude in the back seat was shot in the legs, but both of them was taken to the hospital. Lee, Spot Em Got Em was only hitting the hip. A Did you say head or hip? Hip. Hip? Yeah. I was about to say, this nigga just oh. say, luckily, he was only hitting the head. I was about to say, nigga, that's your head. Nigga, what? Bye. Dude in the back seat was shot in the legs, but both of them was taken to the hospital in stable condition. No one's been arrested for the drive-by, but rumors say it was ATK behind the hit. Meanwhile, the crew's most famous member ain't even in Jacksonville no more. In June 2021, Young and Ace revealed during an interview with Houston radio DJ Ashley Young that he moved out of Jacksonville and now lives in Houston full time. Getting out of the city that made him famous seems to be working out though. Now that he's away from the streets, he's been able to focus more on his music and career. Ace told Ashley Young, we don't even go to clubs. Every day when we wake up, it's to the money. But even though he not in Jacksonville no more, he ain't leaving his homies behind. He's always flying friends and new artists into Houston to show him how to make it in the music industry. Cause according to him, the police don't want him showing back up in Jacksonville. It's crazy that out of everyone involved in this wild beef, Ace seems to be doing the best right now. It all allegedly yeah. started with him. 
but now he's away from it all and just working on his craft. In April 2022, he dropped his latest album with features from Kodak and Boosie, and he also revealed that he's friends with Vanessa Carlton now. Vanessa Carlton is the artist behind A Thousand Miles, which A sampled for the infamous Who I Smoke track. A 2000s pop singer linking up with one of the most savage drill rappers in the game oh is a twist nobody saw coming. But Ace says they got even more music in the works right now. The war in Jacksonville ain't as hot right now as it was back in 2020. But that don't mean it's over. People are still getting shot and killed over the beef between ATK and KTA, but a lot of their main shooters are either dead or fighting cases. Back in November, Fulio said he wasn't going to diss dead ops in his music anymore, but the beef is way deeper than rap at this point. Both yeah. sides have lost a lot of people already, and there's little to no chance that they're going to let it go. The world might die down for a little bit while everyone figures out their legal situations, but one diss could restart the whole thing. Hopefully, some of the other dudes involved in the situation will start moving smarter like Ace has and avoid any more street drama. There's talented artists on both sides who can make it out of the trenches if they just focus on their careers. But when you raise around crime and violence, it's tough to break out of the cycle. Sometimes fans seem to forget that the dudes involved in these beefs are real people with families who care about them. Back in 2018, an 18-year-old named Corbin Johnson was yeah. reported missing by his mom. His remains was found in the woods a year later, and his death was ruled as a murder. In 2021, Fulio dissed Corbin on the track Beatbox Remix slash Bibby Flow. He rapped, Corbin got kidnapped, they found his bones, he was rotten. Where's Corbin? This lyric kicked off a massive TikTok trend where people danced to the line about Corbin's death and the hashtag Where's Corbin reached over 3 million views. On the same track, Fulio nice also went after a 17-year-old named Prosper Love who was murdered in 2014. Prosper's mom heard the song and decided she wasn't going to take it. She started a change.org petition to get violent rap music removed from social media and even started a nonprofit in her son's honor called No Weapon Show Prosper to raise awareness about gun violence. The war in Jacksonville has caused a lot of pain and suffering, but hopefully, now that Ace is in Texas and Fulio is fighting his own case, the violence in the streets will slow down at the least. Most of these cases are still developing, so tap in for updates. Tallulah, come on, yeah, I feel like I feel like that's that's one thing about it though is like social media is like a strong ass drug though. Yeah. Like <clears throat> I feel like like with that shit like reacting to this shit is it's crazy. But then when I just seen like that where's Corbin shit, like and people yeah. actually dancing that shit and like tagging that shit, like I feel like niggas that's doing this and I know it's probably some of y'all watching this and probably some of y'all in the comments like you ought to feel the same to yourself like on some real shit like I ain't even like I ain't even joking or nothing cause that shit is like messed up because I know for a fact nigga it feels like a family member your friend anything like that nigga and niggas is using a name like you know what I'm saying that shit messed up you know yeah. what I'm saying so that's definitely crazy that that shit even happened and people I feel like a lot of people too just did it because everybody do. That's why I say social right. media is a hell of a drug yeah. because people are just probably just doing it, just do it. Don't even know what everybody that shit means. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So shit crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, but definitely it's crazy, man. Make sure y'all comment down more hearing these shit and you know what I'm saying? Keeping up to date with a lot of this shit. Yeah. We don't be knowing shit. You know what I'm saying? Now people are like, damn, y'all sleep on the rock shit damn near because we don't be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me get into it. But y'all, you know, make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button. Definitely, uh, gotta say, you feel me? Uh, appreciate y'all tuning in with us and happy Mother's Day. You already know. Catch y'all next one.